The light shines in the darkness, and the, the darkness, darkness has not overcome it. Indeed, in Jesus' name, welcome. I think my mic's good. I just need to put it closer to my, to my mouth there. So uh, thank you all for your patience. We're, we're continuing to learn the new sound system that all of you have graciously made possible uh, with your gifts so that uh, we're able now to uh, share with people uh, on Facebook as we have, but also on YouTube and on our website. And so thank you all so much for helping us to continue to reach other people with the good news of Jesus. And, and y'all, um, boy, I, I've, got, I've got such a range of emotion today because um, on the, the sad part, our, our brother Ricky Paleo Sr., who many of you have known and loved, our, our, our Cajun brother for many, many years, um, he is literally uh, passing as, as we speak. Uh, but, we're, but we're grateful uh, because his wife Nisha was going to have to make a decision at 4 o'clock today. So um, she doesn't have to make that decision now. So praise the Lord for his goodness and all, all sorts of ways. And um, Amanda has gone to, to be with Nisha. And so we're grateful for the comfort that we have in the midst of our sorrow and the hope the sure and certain hope of the resurrection that we have in, in Jesus Christ. And I'm also, on the other end of the spectrum, so happy because my brother, Wayne Anderson. Wayne, would you just you know, show your hand there? Y'all, uh, uh, this is Pastor Wayne Anderson. Um, he and, and his wife Kay were here, and they serve River Chase Community Church. You know, if you go into River Chase, take a left towards... Alabama Reynolds and Valleydale, right there's River Chase Community Church as you enter River Chase. And, and Wayne was the pastor at River Chase Community Church when I uh, was first uh, blessed to begin here in 1990. And he, he poured so much into me as a, as a big brother in the Lord. And I'm just so, so grateful. I mean, just, the, these are tears of joy. And of course, the tears of others were comfort in the Lord. But, but um, uh, he and his wife Kay just uh, moved back to Birmingham, and uh, I'm so excited to know that. He'll have to put me on block on his, uh, on his, on his phone because what, what an amazing friend and here to worship with us today. And so, uh, Pastor Wayne, in Jesus' name, welcome. What great joy. And for those of you with us on, I guess I have to look up there now for, for the, uh, those of you with us on Facebook Live and YouTube, our, our website, just so, so glad you're here. And uh, a couple of, of quick announcements. We were, were blessed being the last Sunday of the month. Remember, the last Sunday of the month, we have our prayer and healing time that is intentional in terms of prayer teams. We always pray for one another. Larry Loy Cano is always here right after worship at the front to pray with anyone who wants to. And we're all available to one another. But just a reminder, as we had that between worship services in the Luther Room foyer, that the last Sunday of the month, there's always prayer teams waiting to pray with. And so we're grateful for what has been today and what will be the last Sunday moving forward. Um, also, please remember this Friday is our 50th First Friday Prayer Summit as um, we're into now our fifth year of uh, these prayer summits. And if you'd like to join us, the, uh, the way to access by phone is in the insert. And then this Thursday, we're beginning a new disciple Bible study. Um, it's a weekly Bible study. We'll, it'll be Thursday at 2. Um, many of you through the years have participated in, in Disciple. You don't have to do all six years to do any of it, but we w want you to, to let Pat know, Wendy, myself, or call the church office if you'd like to hop in with us this Thursday. And uh, there's another note that we'll share, but we'll, we'll save that for the minute for mission. So glad you're here. In Jesus' name, welcome. Let's share together our memory verse for the month of January that's set there before us from Proverbs 15. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15, 1. Please know that you may remain seated for the brief order for confession of sin and forgiveness. But if you remain seated, please uh, be aware if there's somebody behind you who would like to kneel. 
so that if you remain seated, if you could lean forward, especially if there's someone sitting behind you so that they can kneel if they choose to do so. Let us come before the Lord, whether sitting or kneeling, for the brief order for confession of sin and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, God in love plainly tells us, as is recorded in his word in Holy Scripture, 1 John in particular, that if we say we have no sin, we're only deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us quietly examine our hearts and our lives before the Lord. Let us now confess our sin to God our Father together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. So as a called and ordained servant of the Church of Christ and by his authority in this public assembly, I announce to you what we are all given to share with any who are truly sorry for their sin as we go forth in a little while. Through your faith in the person and work of God's only begotten Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, I announce to you the good news that all your sins are forgiven. Abundant life is restored. And reassurance that Jesus Christ has prepared a place for you in Father God's house and at his never-ending feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's rise and sing together our song of joy. By his wounds, let us sing to the glory of the Lord. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice in the life that you gave. We are healed for you paid the price. By your grace we are saved, we are saved. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice. 
sacrifice and the life that you gave. We are healed for you paid the price. By your grace we are saved. We are saved. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. By his wounds, by his wounds. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Almighty and never living God, according to your will and by your grace, increase in us your gifts of faith, hope, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, teach us to love what Father God commands, so that together we may inherit and obtain all that the Father promises us through his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Caden, would you be willing to grab one of those chairs for Benny so that she can bless us here? And wonderful, Mason, Reese, Jason, Ella Grace, Kate, Ellie, fantastic. It's always so wonderful to have youngsters I think reminding I see us. Another little head back there. Oh, no, that's not a, is that, well, that's a little head, but it's not a little child. <laughs> but you're welcome to come up. <laughs> Amen. Oops. Amen. Be okay. our ears are yours. Good morning. How, and good morning. You can sit here. Okay. Now I have something to show you. Um, well, I would like it if everybody would sit here so I can see you, okay? Some people who can't see you sitting behind me. Oh, can't hear us. Come on, let's sit down, okay? Well, it's a beautiful, nice, brisk day outside this morning, and I'm so happy to see all of you here. Let me ask you a question. You can let her, let her go, let her go. Okay, have you ever seen something like this? Has anybody ever seen? This is not a real good one, but can anybody read what it says? That's right. Like here, there's no place in this whole wide world like home at our church to me. Well... Sometimes you have seen this picture at somebody's home, and it is their way of saying that home is a warm and welcoming place. It's a place where they are happy. And are you happy, Mason? Okay, we're, I want to need you to talk to me today. The home has been a favorite subject of authors, poets, and songwriters since the beginning of time. And I'm going to give you some examples of home, okay? Over 150 years ago, John Howard Payne wrote a song called Home Sweet Home. And here's some of the words. I'm not going to sing it, though. Home, home, sweet, sweet home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. It's true that home is a wonderful place to be most of the time, but not always. In our Bible lesson today, Jesus went back to his hometown of Nazareth, and he did, was not received very well there. They weren't a, it wasn't a very warm welcome. And in his travels around Galilee, Jesus had performed many miracles and had been well received. When he returned to Nazareth, they had heard about the miracles that Jesus had done in Capernaum, and they just didn't know how they could be true. After all, wasn't this Joseph's son? How could the son of a carpenter do all these things that they had heard about? They just didn't believe it. Now Jesus heard the people grumbling, and he said to them, No doubt you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his home, own hometown. Now the people at the synagogue became furious. They jumped up, they mobbed Jesus, and they drove him out of the town and took him up on the hill on which the town was built because they wanted to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and he went on his way. I doubt that Jesus was thinking there's no place like home on that day. It seems that no matter 
what Jesus did. The people in his hometown rejected him, but we don't reject Jesus. In fact, we, the word today is, my heart is Jesus' home. So at the count of three, say, my heart is Jesus' home. One, two, three. My, my heart, heart is, is Jesus' home. home. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may we welcome Jesus to make our heart his home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. As the youngsters return to their seats, let's encourage them with words like Paul did with Timothy long ago. Trust and follow Jesus. He gives you power, love, and self-control. Indeed, living God, speak to our hearts through the reading of your word in Holy Scripture. Could have been that Amanda was the reader, and of course she went to be with Nisha at the hospital. Thank you, Angela. Praise the Lord. The first lesson and the song. The first lesson today is from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Lord God, Behold, I do not know how to speak, because I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Here ends the reading. Hmm. The psalm is from book 71, verse 1 through 6. God is our hope and confidence. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall always be of you. Here ends the reading. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Indeed, we hear God's word from the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. And Jesus began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all were speaking well of him and wondering at the gracious words which were falling from his lips. And they were saying, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, No doubt, you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we heard was done in Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. But I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was shut up for three years and six months when a great famine came over all the land. And yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. And they got up and drove him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city had been built in order to throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went his way. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you, for you are the living God, source and giver of life, abundant and everlasting, and there is no other. And we thank you for revealing yourself so plainly to us through your word and by your spirit, in your mighty act of creation and your mighty acts in creation, and most wondrously through the incarnation of your living word, your Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, you who have called and gathered us, work in our hearts to give us plain understanding. Give us eyes of the heart, eyes of faith, according to the word of the Father, so that we might plainly understand these, your words, Father, that are before us, and being encouraged and being given by you to know you all the more personally, and ourselves too, made in your image, that we might eagerly go forth in a little while so that the words of our mouths and the words of our actions would be pleasing in your sight, instruments for your drawing all who are before us ever nearer to you, our Lord, our Savior, and our God. In Jesus' most wondrous and precious name do we pray. Amen. So as always, to make sure that we're on the same page, we want to note that we're about halfway at this point through the season of Epiphany. Epiphany being a word that means to show, to shine light on, to reveal, to make manifest. It's the third season of the church year where Advent is God's call for us to prepare for him who promises to come to us. Christmas, we celebrate that God in Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, that God in Christ is with us, and we celebrate your fulfillment of your promises, Lord. In Epiphany, this season, we learn from the Lord who God is and what God is about. God teaches us of himself, who he is. We could go through the alphabet many times. A time, you know, God is almighty and benevolent and comforter and deliverer and everlasting and father and guide. We could go through the whole alphabet many a time and never exhaust all that God reveals to us about himself and what God is up to. And because we are made in God's image, we learn from you, Lord, through your word, who we are and what we, therefore, are to be about also. And, and out of this revelation that you, Lord, give us through your word, we are given, as is our epiphany theme this year, to have expectation of what will be a part of our lives, what is a part of our lives, what has been, what will be, and what we can expect along life's path. And today, we are given to dig in in the one word as we seek to have one word so we can focus each week. God tells us that we can expect being made in God's image and walking in faith. We can expect challenge, challenge to come our way. So let me ask the question. How many here today have ever had a challenging season of life? Yeah, yeah. God's always so good about bringing up things that are relevant to and connected to our lives, eh? Yeah. You know, the the, the list of things that may have been upon us, and for many of you I know are upon you that are challenging and that will be in front of us. Do Do we really need to go through a list of the things that come our way in life and challenge us? Our health, so, so happy that Dominic is back with us today after his recent return to work, after his bout with COVID uh, really took him to his knees in the hospital and all sorts of, of, of difficulty. We, we know that our relationships can be challenging. Uh, our work, whether it's as a volunteer or for pay, 
our relationships, our, our network of relationships, in, in our families, in our workplaces, in our communities and beyond, can regularly be challenging. Our concerns about the children of this generation, the challenge of rearing them in a way that we trust the Lord will help us to maximize the possibilities that they don't get into the challenge of substances or things of the flesh that, that come to be hard to turn over and, and get past. But in the Lord, there is most certainly forgiveness and new beginnings. Praise God. You know, when, when, we're, when we're going through a challenging time, it, it might feel like uh, someone who's on a comfortable chair or couch watching TV. You, you know, you come into their presence and, you're, and f- from everything you see, it's like, well, they're definitely comfortable. They're, they're in, in a chair or a chase lounge or on the couch or something, and, and they're just vegging. You know, they're just enjoying watching TV. And yet what might be going on inside of them is an endless and persistent misery. Challenge isn't always apparent on the outside because so much of what challenges us is on the inside, in, in, our, in our hearts and in our minds. You know, today, scriptures that Angela served us with and that we heard from the gospel God presents us some challenges. We hear God approach Jeremiah and say, I know you say that you're too young, but I have appointed you to speak to nations, to build up and to tear down, to plant and to destroy. You're up to it because I know it's a big challenge, but... I've called you to this. Indeed, it sounds like our sister Nisha Paleo yesterday when Caden and I were blessed to visit with her again. And she's just looking that challenge right in the face and knowing that as Ricky's wife, God's called her to be one who would bear that challenge of having to make a decision about turning the machines off of her husband. But as we shared earlier, we praise the Lord that God spared her from having to make that decision. And Ricky is passing, may have even passed at this time. And of course, we're going over after worship to, to be with them. Nisha's not the only one recently. Uh, earlier today, George Webby was with us. His brother-in-law, uh, Sherry Gilbert's brother, John, uh, died just a few days ago. Uh, Rick Blevins, uh, Kate and I went up to Huntsville yesterday for visitation as Rick's dad, Harold, uh, died earlier this week. Uh, we, we, we know that Jan Kamlick is facing the challenge of, of stage four pancreatic cancer. God, God comes to us with challenges. God permits challenges to come our way. Things that we think maybe we're not old enough or strong enough, wise enough to be able to face. Jesus, speaking of face, gets in the face of the people in his, in his own hometown today. You know, they, 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 they look and it's like me looking at Kate here, for example. I've known Kate since she was born and I'll always remember Kate with her little uh, ponytail holder and her, and her hair up there from her being in our, our preschool. And, and, you know, to watch Kate grow, we, we might look at her and maybe not see her for a while. Like, Wayne, you and I haven't seen each other for a while. And, but as a child, we could say, the day's going to come when we, when we look at Kate and we go, you became a what? That little girl that we knew? You know, they, they, they looked at Jesus. They looked at Jesus in today's gospel reading. They remembered him being, you know, the little babe in a manger. And, and wow, this is Joseph and Mary's little guy. And you became a what? 
The, the, the Savior of the world? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And Jesus doesn't leave that alone. He continues to challenge the faith of the people, saying to them, you know, the, 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 the rejection of what the Father has sent me and given me to grow in wisdom and stature to be in, 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 in your utter disbelief it's such a challenge to you to think that kids can grow up into being something that is valuable to the world well let me tell you something else Jesus is saying there were a whole bunch of people in Israel you're your your people people there are a whole bunch of people in Israel who were widows during the famine and Elijah went to somebody who wasn't an Israelite widow. He went to a Gentile woman. And you can just feel their blood start to boil as if to say, are you kidding me? God's love is for other people who aren't the chosen people. And then he, he really pushes them over the edge when he challenges them by saying, and there were all kinds of lepers in Israel right here in your midst. But Elisha didn't heal them. He healed Naaman, the Syrian and, and by the way, this Gentile, when he was told by the prophet, you need to go and wash in waters in Israel, he found it hard to swallow because Naaman was an important man. And he was like, well, couldn't I have just washed in the waters back in my own country? But the Gentile was obedient, and he washed in the waters of Israel and became clean so that when he went back and people saw his leprosy was gone, Naaman, when people said, what happened to you? He'd have to say, well, an Israelite healed me. In Israelite waters. And they would testify, wow, how great is the God of Israel. He does things for his people that no other God does for theirs. See, see, God's setting before us today that when we think that nobody else understands the challenges that we're going through, God does because he's the God of challenge. He's, he's the God through whom those challenges have to come. He's sovereign. The mystery of being sovereign where he's in charge of everything and, let, and yet he lets you, Robbie, choose to get out of bed and come today or not I mean sovereign God the mystery of God being in control of everything and yet permitting a freedom that we might be in relationships God has to permit whatever challenge comes our way and sometimes he just sends it directly you know, you know we, we all we, we're all we're, we're, all, we're all tempted to think, man, when I become a Christian, you know, it's going to be a whole lot easier. It's going to be easier for my family. You know, when I pick up the pace in, 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 in the quantity of times I come before the Lord, things are going to get easier. And, and we quote from the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus saying, all you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my, and my burden is light. This is a good example of why it's important for us to study the Bible. Whatever you can do to study the Bible. Because you see the way I just use that scripture. Oh yeah, being a Christian is going to be comfortable and easy. Because Jesus says it. Come to me. All you weary, heavy laden. And I will give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. It's in a context. It's in a context. Remember the old saying? A text. When you take a verse of scripture. A text without a context. When you pull a verse of scripture out of its place. A text without a context is a pretext. Which means you're setting yourself up for a proof text. You're setting yourself up to prove whatever it is you want to prove because you pulled out a scripture and said, well, this is what God says. A text without a context is a pretext for a proof text. Basically what it means is this. Jesus says, yeah, come to me all you're weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. But it's in the context of people who were saying to people, 
You can do it. I mean, I can do it. You can do it. You don't need the Lord to help you. You can do whatever you want. In fact, I'm going to tell you what you need to do because you can do it. You can serve me, basically, what it amounted to. And Jesus is like, no, those people are putting a millstone around your neck, Sharon. Don't listen to them. The only thing I'm ever going to ask you to do, I promise to be with you when I do it, to give you the strength to do it, and to lead the way in doing it. And at the same time, I'll be your rear guard. I'll walk beside you. I'll reign above you. I'll be your sure foundation. I'll even live in you if you'll let me in. I will never ask you to do anything that I don't help you with. Come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Because I will never ask you to do anything. I will never permit a challenge to come your way where I don't help you. In other words, challenge comes, I come too. I'm a part of the package deal of what is permitted to come your way. Do you remember in the Beatitudes? Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. I mean, that doesn't sound very comfortable. People are mourning. Blessed are those who are persecuted. See, see, Jesus says there are lots of things that come our way in life that are not comfortable. They are challenging. But you are blessed when you trust that I am with you. I'm with you. Do you, do you remember when Jesus would tell parables? How many times when Jesus told a parable did the religious leaders go, mm, 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 he's talking about us again. Ugh. Reminds us of the old saying that's really only about 120 years old as I understand it. A guy who came up with the saying, Jesus came to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Jesus came to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. It reminds us, does it not, something about Jesus saying, unless you say no to yourself, that's what he means when he says deny yourself and take up your cross, which is his way of saying, saying yes to God. So, Chris, unless you say no to yourself and yes to God and stick close to Jesus, that's what he means when he says, and follow me. Then he says, you'll never learn from me. Unless you say no to yourself, yes to God, stick close to me, you'll never learn from me that when these hard things, these challenges, these difficulties come your way, that I'm with you. And, and like the promise I've made to you to work through all things together for good, I will work through this together with all things for good also. Also, yeah. You see, what is it that God might be working in you in the midst of your challenge? Is there something that you need to unlearn is there some way of thinking about life and the world and relationships and what this world is all about? Is there something that you need to unlearn that God is seeking to teach you in this challenge that's coming your way as opposed to saying, man, I don't, I don't, I don't like what that guy's saying. I don't like what that preacher's saying. That just doesn't fit with the way I think. And so I'm going to find me what is readily findable around here. I'm going to find me another church. Find me another church. See, maybe, maybe what's leading you in your flesh to get out of Dodge is God saying to your spirit, you need to unlearn something. Because that's a bad way of thinking. Because God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Maybe, maybe he, in this challenge, is inviting you to receive him lifting you up so you can see things from a different vantage point of perspective. That it isn't only about you, Casey. It isn't only about you, Ernesto. But there are some people who aren't in church today who I'm going to bless also. And I'm sending you like Jeremiah, to invite them into the household of faith? Are our prejudices such that we see someone and we're like, well, you know, they're not like me. They don't look like me. I don't have piercings. I don't have tattoos. I don't have whatever I don't have. They don't look like me. And so I'm not going to 
I'm not going to give them the good stuff. I mean, they look like they deserve, well, whatever they deserve, but I'm not giving them the time of day, let alone the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you being challenged? Is God raising you up through your difficulty to see people like he told the people in his own hometown? He was lifting them up to see others differently. What about maybe God is challenging you because there's something in your life that needs to be uncovered. That needs to be exposed to save you from yourself. Because you think that what you do in the darkness and in your own little space, nobody's going to know. How will they find out? God makes it really clear that confession is good for the soul and it's a much easier path than being discovered. Maybe God's challenging you to seek out a friend in Christ who you know will hear your confession and tell you that in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Maybe you're being invited to a strength and a way of going about things that will bear fruit like you've never seen before. You know, telling people you pray for them, that's a, that's a good thing actually stopping and praying with them, speaking the name of Jesus, the only name by which we can be saved because it means, the name of Jesus literally means God saves. My prayer doesn't save you. I join you in prayer, bow with you in prayer because we're going to the God who can do it and he alone. God challenges us and gives us a, a clear one, two, three. I promise you can ask the people at 8 o'clock. I'll be, I'll be brief as we come around the home stretch here. The Lord makes it real clear for us in James chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. It's really easy to remember, isn't it? James 1, 2, 3, 4. James chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. He gives us a command a reason and a promise. In James 1, verse 2, we hear, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various, it says trials, but it means challenges. Consider it pure joy when you encounter various challenges. Now, how, how, how are we supposed to consider it joy when a challenge comes our way. I, I would offer you just super quickly, remember God's promises. If he said it, he's going to do it. Remember God's promises. Then thank the Lord for this growth opportunity because he promises that if you will stick with him, you will see yourself and or the people around you grow. Choose to believe in him. Choose to believe his promises. Don't just remember. I mean, I can choose out of the refrigerator, mustard or mayonnaise. When I'm in Jesus Christ, I can choose to go the way of Christ or I can choose to hide in the darkness. When I'm in Christ, I can choose. Once I go away from Christ, I've lost all ability because I can only choose the wrong. But when I'm in Christ, I can choose to say, Father, you promised, make it true for me. And then refuse Refuse to be shut down by the challenge and choose to go on. And choose to go on. We are, we are given a command to consider it joy when challenges come our way. Because, verse 3, there's a reason. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. The Greek word that is translated here, endurance, is the word hupomone. Okay? Basically, what it means is under one. You, 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 see, you, see, you see, Nikki, when you're going through that hard time, you think you're the only one who can understand what's going on. Nobody understands me. My husband doesn't understand me. My children don't understand me. And Robbie, you say the same thing. My wife, you know, this is my, my wife, she doesn't understand what's going on with me. But under one, 
Chupomene. It means that you are under the one who does understand. Oh, it's not to you. See, you said, I can't get through this. You already established that. You can't get through it. But guess what? You weren't alone. So when you got through it, how'd you get through it? Because you were under the one who, who, brings, us, who brings us through. So that, end of the sermon, because endurance must come to its perfection so that you may be perfect and complete. Key phrase, lacking in nothing. Oh, so uh, God brought me through that challenge. It's good for us to look back and remember like the people of Israel did on the edge of the promised land and they're like, let's get into the promised land and God's like, no, 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 no. I want you to look back over the last 40 years and I want you to see that when you thought that faith was going to run out, it didn't run out because I was with you. You thought when hope was going to run out, it didn't run out because I was with you. You thought when love was going to run out, it didn't run out because I was with you. Through every challenge along the way, I am with you. You thought that the fruit of the Holy Spirit was going to run out. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 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 goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You thought they were all going to run out. They didn't run out and they won't run out because you have now seen through this most recent challenge that I was with you, am with you, and will be with you. Expect challenges in the life of faith. Because through it, God strengthens us in faith towards him and love for one another to be encouraged and to encourage one another along life's way. Challenges and all. May God be praised. Amen. Let's rise and sing together. from your love no sickness no secret no chain is strong enough to keep us from your love to keep us from your love oh Keep 
us by your love. You keep us by your love. Oh, why? Oh, why? No matter where I am, healing is in. deep is your love how strong how strong is your love now by your grace I stand healing is in your hands who has made us who has strengthened us who has healed us, forgiven us, preserved us for abundant and everlasting life. So let's confess our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for He is the one who blesses us with every blessing in Christ Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our prayers or you may kneel. Please be mindful if you remain seated, if there's someone behind you, and please lean forward so that they can kneel um, behind you if they would choose to do so. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Lord, you told Jeremiah that you knew him before you formed him in the womb. Indeed, you also consecrated him there to be a prophet. Help us to teach our children and grandchildren to seek your plans for their lives. Remind them that you will provide whatever words they will need to speak clearly for you. Help them move past whatever problem people will confront. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you are our strength, our refuge in time of trouble. You are our hope, our confidence when we don't know where to turn next. Deliver us from sinful ways, whether ours or the unbelieving of the world around us. Set us free to hear your word and sustain us so that we grow in faith just as we grow in years. We praise you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, Help us to understand what it means to love others in the same way that you showed your love for us by dying for us on the cross. Your love is a love that teaches us to serve others with the attitude of joy when others do not respond in the same way. We keep sinning and you keep forgiving us and loving us. Your love never ends. As we have grown from children to adults, we see your love more closely. Change us to reflect your love in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, comfort your loved ones with all who are lonely, fearful, or brokenhearted. Sustain all who are suffering in body or spirit, especially. On this day, O oh Lord, we ask that you would receive into your arms as a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive our brother Ricky Paleo Sr., into your arms of mercy that have sustained him in this life, even as now you call him home. Give strength to his, his wife, Nisha, and their son, Ricky, and all of us who were blessed to know and love Ricky as a companion in this pilgrim journey. Give us your help to see in death the gate to everlasting life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence, until that great and glorious day when by your call the dead shall be raised in Christ and
we shall all stand before you and by the grace, your grace in Jesus Christ, be received into the place in your house and seat at your table, the never-ending feast. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would also be with our brother Bob Cooper who suffered a stroke and needs many prayers in his long recovery. Help us to visit him, to write him notes as with so many others on our prayer lists, like our sister Joy Deering, who suffered a fall and is in great pain in her back, and the many others who are on our hearts, like our brother Earl Waller, who's healing from his surgery this past week, and Jan Kamlick with her pancreatic cancer consultation this coming week, and for Tara Slater's niece, Brittany Ridge, who gave birth to twin girls on January the 10th, but hasn't yet seen them because she herself is on a ventilator suffering from COVID pneumonia. Lord, there's so many challenges on us and around us. Increase our faith. We do believe, help our unbelief, that we might know that you who said, let there be light and there was light, will indeed be with us as you promised never to forsake us or leave us. You will see us through as with the psalmist walking through the valley of deep darkness who knew that he need not fear because you were with him. Give us the same confidence in you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, the story of your preaching in Nazareth challenges us to advance our faith from knowing you as a gracious speaker to learning Old Testament stories with a richness that prepares us to teach others. Open our hearts to read all the activities of the prophets Elijah and Elijah to understand the messages and miracles that they have brought to your people Israel. Keep our eyes on how these stories all point to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. It is indeed into your hands, O Lord, that we commend our lives, these for whom we pray, your church in this and every place, our nation, our president, the nations of the world, our peacekeeping forces here and deployed abroad, and those who have no one to pray for them by name, but to whom you send us, challenging us to look at people, speak a word to people, even though they be strangers, and eagerly say the name of Jesus in whom there is power, the power of salvation, foolishness to those who do not believe, but the power of salvation from you, O Lord, in grace, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose most precious name we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Heads on the swivel, hands a-waving. Please greet one another with the peace of the Lord. What a, what a blessing indeed. So, so grateful. So grateful. Um, peace be with you, Nick. Our minute for mission is very brief, even though it covers a month. This is the end of January. Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, is the beginning of March, March the 2nd. In the month in between, we need Lenten pre-readers. Lent just is better when we all participate. We need pre-readers of our book, The Gospel Comes with a House Key, with our Lenten theme of hospitality. Because on uh, Sundays in Lent, we have shorter speakers, and on Wednesdays in Lent, we have longer speakers. We had some leave after worship saying, I'm praying about serving in that way. We also need to have our Lenten devotional book completed by the beginning of Lent so it can be a devotional resource for one another and to people that we know in our lives. Caden unwittingly, uh, in, in the devotion he sent out this morning, as he does every day, um, wrote a beautiful devotion on God welcoming us and sending us to welcome others. That's our first Lenten devotion, ready for uh, the devotional uh, booklet. We need others. We can provide a verse for you, or you can pick from the list of the Lenten scriptures. But in sum, uh, let's be together to get ready to be a blessing to one another and to others as we invite them into the household of faith during the season of Lent that requires preparation for us to be ready when it arrives. The Mercy Basket is for Aaron's staff, which is a ministry that we share in with a number of churches, um, especially to the south of us. It was begun by Pastor Tim Tremble and his wife 
uh, their son Aaron um, had a, a number of uh, challenges and, and disabilities in his life. He died at a very young age. Um, Aaron's staff actually refers to the biblical reference of those that, that um, held up Moses' hands when he uh, held them up during uh, the battle of the people as God commanded him. But uh, the ministry is to serve families with children with special needs so that uh, once a month, the child with special needs and their siblings is welcomed uh, for food and ministry so that the parents can have uh, one night a month to be able to catch their breath. So Aaron Steph uh, Respite Ministry is what our mercy basket is for as you go forth um, after worship, but as an act of worship. Our praise band blesses us with God's word as we prepare the table. i 
deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Praise you, Lord, for your amazing and reckless love. Please rise and let us pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we remember, and the Lord promises that in remembering we will know His very presence along with His blessings and benefits of forgiveness, abundant life renewed, and reassurance of everlasting life in Father God's house and at His table. And so we remember that on the night in which He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to His disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper He took the cup and gave thanks and gave her for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as ye forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone is invited to this. It is the Lord's table. Right preparation is to believe Jesus at his word in a way that we don't understand. And yet upon believing, we begin to understand by your grace, Lord. Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and all that goes with that. So as you would, you may be seated and then gather at the usher's direction around the Lord's table.
And now may this, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's rise and sing together our song to take to the world. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to be, you were the King of kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were. And now your reign is still enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join them as they sing. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God forever. Creator God, you gave me best so I could praise your great and matchless name. All my days, all my days, so let my whole life be a blazing offering. A life that shouts and sings the greatness of our King. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be all. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be all. We sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Larry Lloyd Cano is in the front to pray with anybody who would like to have someone personal to pray with. There are others certainly in your midst, but Larry's in the front awaiting anyone who would like to pray with him. In the strength of Christ and the lead of Holy Spirit, let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. 